Hi all, um, <clears throat> today we're going to tie a, a Buford. Um, I've been asked a few times to tie one of these. Um, there's a few tutorials out on YouTube, but not many, so I thought I'd just put one out there. Um, I'm going to keep it quite similar to the original uh, Brad Bowen pattern, uh, meaning that the, uh, the bucktail is going to be tied in the same way. Uh, so for this I'm going to use an articulated shank, and this is a 35mm uh, shank which I've already put in the vise and the thread I'm going to use is uh, GSP 100 <clears throat> which is my standard thread that I use with bucktail. Let's lay some wraps down. Take off the excess. Put a bit of glue down on top of that to stop any slipping. This is a pretty quick fly to tie, so all we need really are uh, uh, schlapping or, or long saddle feathers, as you can see here. Um, bucktail, and for this one I'm going to tie, tie a red and white and grey version. So I've got, <clears throat> as you can see, white, grey and sort of very fluorescent red, and the red's going to be the head of the fly. We're also going to put some flash in it, and for the main, the sort of the back section of the fly I'm going to use uh, the new white flashaboo and also the sunrise version which is a mixture of silver black and a pleasant uh, green flash in there and as we get nearer the head I'm going to put some the same colors but in the standard flashaboo and I, I might add a bit of red in there as well not sure yet we'll see how we go so the first thing we're going to do we're going to tie down the saddle feathers these are quite wide ones I don't tend to use uh, these wide feathers on a lot of my flies but for the Buford for the Bufords they're perfect so let's tie these down and the beauty of this fly you can tie it real quick it doesn't have to be super neat let's tie those feathers in there they don't have to be feathers don't have to be even um, sometimes I like a bit of taper in those anyway although these are quite even. Tie those down like this. Super quick. <clears throat> right, so we're going to put some bucktail down now near the tail. Don't need a lot on the, on the, on the, on the shank. <clears throat> and the reason I tie a shank in is just to, just to extend the fly out a little bit. And also, it stops the the uh, the saddle feathers snagging on the hook bend. So I'll probably use the full length. Just wrap that over the top, spread it round the shank, tie that down. Quite loose wraps. We don't need to go too tight on this. We don't want it too flayed. <clears throat> Like that. Um, so I don't like my thread wraps exposed, so what I tend to do is put some dubbing. So this is Angelina fiber, dirt cheap. It's used for uh, adding flash to quilts, and it's a lot cheaper than buying it directly from a uh, fly shop. So um, I'm gonna save a bit of money, get some of that. Wrap that down. So it doesn't need to be super neat, we're just protecting those thread wraps. I come near the head. Just build a bit, a bit of a thread dam there. Okay, so we need some more white. So a little bit more than we did for the tail. And as with bucktail, if you've used bucktail before, you need to get rid of the underfur. There's some underfur there that will interfere with the tying. And make sure you remove any super long ones. So we want that to come to about here. 
if you can see. So I'm going to do, do this slightly differently to how I usually reverse tie. The original Brad Bowen pattern tied bucktail this way. They went over the top once they reversed it. So I'll do the same for this fly. Sometimes I build a dam in front, but I actually prefer Buford's tied in this style. So I'll show you how that's done. And also it speeds up the tying process. Get rid of these butts. Don't have to go too tight because they actually help flare that bucktail out. So I don't want to cut them too short. There we go, it's nice and even. I'm going to come over the top. So a couple of loose thread wraps over the top and pull down. As you can see, if you leave those but if you cut those butts too short, the thread can go over the top of them. You don't get as much flare. So I like to leave those butts a little bit longer. Sometimes I don't cut them, especially on when I'm tying on the hook. So there we go. It's a nice, quick, easy way, and also it stays on thread. The next um, tying point, we're going to put some flash. So I really like this white um, uh, Magnum flash and the standard flash from Hedron. So we'll take about four strands. And we're going to cut that in half. It's just, we don't need that length. Cut it in half. And we're also going to take some uh, flash blue called Moonlight. Again, take about four strands of different colours. Adds a little bit of contrast to your fly. You don't have to use flash. A lot of the um, musky patterns that I see use quite a minimal amount of flash in them. It's mostly bucktail. But we're using this fly to fish for pike. And I like to put flash in my flies for pike. Just make sure you taper the ends. Like that. Come over the top. And then tease that back. We get an even spread. Come over the top. Quick finish. Do another one just for just to make sure that thread is secure. Cut. A little bit of glue. Faster. Just make sure that those that hole isn't covered with glue. Right, so that's the tail section done. Super quick. Now for the hook, I prefer to use a heavy wire hook because it helps. This is quite a buoyant pattern, especially if you're using a lot of bucktail. Um, so I like to use a heavy hook just to ensure that fly sinks ever so slowly. I don't want it to float. I want it to sink or stay neutral buoyant to get the best movement out of it. Now these flies move quite erratically in the water. If you've seen the Buford before, it's got a very um, uh, bushy head. So that tends to push the water. And when you strip it and then pause, it tends to stop the fly dead in the water or it'll arc off to the left or the right. Um, so it's, it's a very attractive fly to fish and the pike in my water seem to respond well to it at the moment. Especially when the river's uh, coloured up. So in the vise we've got an A-Rex uh, uh, Light Predator 6.0. I think the model number is PR320. Uh, you can use a 4.0. I prefer the 6.0s for these flies. Um, it's quite a large fly. It's about 9 to 10 inches long. Now to attach the articulated shank, I prefer to use mono. Uh, there's no point using wire. It's wire is quite expensive. I find mono strong enough. I've never had a tail come off with mono, so I'm happy to use this. But it's up to you what you use. If you want to save a bit of money, use monofilament. 
And this is forty pound. Can you? I wouldn't go any lower than that, but um, of course you can use a, a heavier or a wider diameter. As of a lot of my shanks, you've probably seen from the other tutorials, I like to use three beads, and these are four mil. It's just to give enough distance for this shank to be away from the hook so it doesn't foul. Go through the eye, and then over the through the eyes. Make sure that's straight, like that. There we go. Just tie that down and come up the shank. Nice and tight wraps. This isn't going to go anywhere. You don't need to double it over. As like I said, there's no hook on the end. And it keeps it nice and secure. Just using nice tight uh, thread wraps. You want a bit of glue over the top. Just to penetrate the thread. Those who have watched my videos before know that I can't use super glue, so I'm using Liquid Fusion, which is a water-based uh, urethane adhesive. Um, it takes a little while, a little bit longer to, to set, but it's uh, strong enough. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's a good glue. I really, I really recommend it. All right, for the next step, we're going to put bucktail. I uh, use white bucktail again. Uh, we're going to tighten exactly the same way as we did for the, the head of the shank. So let's just measure this up. So let's get some bucktail first. So we'll measure that up. So we're looking to come to about... To about there. Don't need that length. So again, we're going to reverse tie this, but we're going to tie down over the top. So come a bit forward. Two or three wraps around the shank. Just use your thumb and just wrap that round. I don't like to spin my bucktail here at this stage because I find it more control if I'm manipulating it around the hook. So just hold those butts, otherwise it will spin, and pull tight. And a few hard wraps around just to keep it secure. Then use your pen to push that back. We don't need to cut the butts on this one because they're quite short already. And then come over the top, two loose wraps, and then pull down. And as you can see there, it flares the bucktail nice. I'm going to come forward, and this time we're going to use some grey bucktail, just to add a bit of contrast, otherwise the fly is very white. Um, I'm getting quite low on grey, so we're going to use some grey near the near the base. Make sure we remove the under fibres. So we're going to come to about here. I don't need all that. We'll come forward a bit more. Wrap it around. Make sure that bucktail is evenly, evenly distributed. Pull down tight. There you go. Use a tool, push it back. Come over the top. Two or three loose wraps and then pull down tight. There we go. We need some more flash in this. So again we're going to use the magnum flash. So the moonlight, we have three or four strands. Try and pick the try and pick the black in the pearlescent and the silver. So we don't need a hell of a lot of flash in this. Less is more as they say, in some cases. Some more white. 
again about three or four strands. Because once you cut it in half, that's eight. And it's about 16 strands in total here, which is plenty. Just mix that together. Just roll your finger around it so it mixes. Make sure they're tapered. Like that, we can use the full length, we don't need to trim it. So we're gonna come over the top. I like to tie my flash over the top of the fly, not so much underneath. Um, I don't want it fouling on the hook. Like that. Inevitably you're gonna get some bits of flash that go underneath, but we don't need to be super tidy with this fly. Okay, so we need to come forward again. We can use the uh, we can use the grey again. So I'm getting very low on grey, so typically I'd work my way down the tail from the tip to the base as I'm working on the fly, but as you can see there, I have that luxury. My my bucktail is running out. I'm very short on grey. Let me press some more. Move the underfibers. So we're going to come to about here. Shorten those tips a little bit. Two or three loose wraps over the top. Lose some few and it doesn't matter so much. Let's move that one that's caught. Hold, hold the base and then pull tight. Come down hard. Use your tool to go back. Over the top, two or three times, pull tight to lock it in place. And come forward. Come forward about half, uh, five millimeters or so. You can use more of the grey, maybe a bit more this time. We're just going to get thicker as we get closer to the head. Because we want that head to quite a wide profile, just to push that bit of extra water. Right, like that. Again, go over the top two or three times. Make sure that's around the shank. A little bit more underneath. Hold your butts, pull down tight. Two or three wraps over the top. Sometimes it slips, like in this case. Just try and, you might have to build a dam on that one. That's, that's fine. Build it down just to tame that bucktail. Right, this time we're going to use some standard flashaboo. So, the same colours as before. So, we're going to go for some white. Probably about eight or nine strands. And again, we're going to use standard flashaboo and sunrise. Again, the same amount. Doesn't have to be exact. We're going to add a little bit of red to this one. Not so much, just a little bit. Maybe four, four strands. Mix that up. Length is about right. And go over the top like that. Tie that down. You find that GSP slips. Add a little bit of super glue if you can, just over the flash. 
fix it in place then. Add a little bit of glue. It's really important to glue after you tie flash down because it stops it slipping. So we're getting close now. Right, for the next section, we're going to uh, use, um, we're going to put some saddle feathers in first. So for the, for the uh, near the head, I like to use uh, thin saddle feathers, probably only three, three or four. And if you've got long saddle feathers like this, don't don't take them all off. Just just cut them in half because you can use those the other sections on a, on an overfly. So just cut, let's say, four inches, and we'll tie these in one by one so they're evenly distributed. So one on the side, one on the top. A little bit like that. Tie those down. Okay, for the last section, we need to build the head. <clears throat> Now I don't like to make these heads too bushy uh, um, because I, I find if I add too much um, bucktail here, it tends to float the fly. Um, so I'm going to use uh, two sections of bucktail. The first one I'm going to build the collar. So for this we need um, but turn nearer the base, from the mid to the base, and we'll take a, a good healthy amount. And you'll move those under fibres. The trick here is to not cut. So we need to imagine that that's going to flare to about here. So where my thumb is, is where I need to come down. So let's try that and see if we get that right. So what I'll do, about three or four threads round. I'm going to push down, and make sure that's evenly distributed. You can look in front to make sure that is, that is. And then we're going to pull tight. You could you could spin it, um, but I find you just get a more even even an even distribution of the bucktail if you do it this way. So what we're going to do as we do if you ever worked with deer hair, just wiggle your thread through these until you come to the open uh, the open shank here. Just build a small dam in front of that. Just to keep them secure. You catch a few, it doesn't matter. So let's just cover that hook shank with thread wraps. Right, for the last section, we can use some more bucktail near the base. If you use it too near the tail, it's quite stiff and quite difficult to manipulate. So we'll take a good healthy, probably a pencil width. Make sure we remove the end of the fibres. So we need this to be approximately the same or slightly shorter than the, the bucktail behind here. So where my th thumb is, is where I need to cut. So I'm going to take the, the tips off. Just measure that again, make sure we've got that right. If you do it this way, it saves a lot of um, messing about trying to shape the head with scissors. Personally, I prefer just to, to do it this way. And the advice from Brad Bowen is don't worry about the head looking too pretty. So we're going to tie this as, we, as if we would with deer hair. So we're two loose wraps and then we're going to spin it 
like that. There we go. So we're going to come in front. And we're finish. Don't worry if you catch a few hairs, it's fine. It's beautiful this fly, you don't have to be too neat with it. Tie it off, do another one as well so it's nice and secure. Maybe add a bit of glue to your, to your thread. The last set, last um, thing I need to do is just make sure, just just trim those wild hairs that that hair that are slightly longer. Doesn't have to be too neat. The messier, the better, I think. And like I said, you know, if you listen to the guys that tie these and you know, fish for them for years, you know, Brad Bowen, you know, David O'Sullivan, and, and others as well. No, they tie some awesome flies and um, yeah, listen to the advice of those guys, you can't go wrong. And there we go, and that's the Buford. Tides very similar to the original.